Okay, so today Eugene and I want to tell you two stories. The first story is about pirates. So imagine yourself as a five-year-old kid. You've just come out of class, and after hearing the truly fascinating story of Jack Sparrow and his epic adventures, you and your five best friends are totally hyped up about pirates. It's break time at school when suddenly, oh my goodness, one of your friends exclaims, she's just realized that you have enough people to roleplay pirates. Yes. Naturally, you're the ship's captain. Other key roles get filled too. The quartermaster, the sailing master, someone volunteers to be the boat swing. The last two roles, the master gunner and the rigger, get, and the rigger get quickly filled too. You've assembled your world-class crew and you're ready to take on the harsh, unforgiving trials and tribulations of the seven seas. So after 20 minutes of courageous voyage, your crew gets whipped back to reality when the teacher approaches, holding the hand of a student you did not notice in class. The teacher politely asks, hey kids, can you find a place for Sam in your little game? Without hesitation, you and your crew members allow Sam to climb aboard your imaginary pirate ship and find a position for him, the powder boy, a seemingly insignificant role. However, quickly as the captain, you realize how important each and every crew member really is, even the powder boy. If it weren't for his hard work filling the cannons with gunpowder, you would have been easily defeated by the enemy. If your crew didn't include him in the game, you would have lost the battle. The whistle blows, and you and your now six best friends head back to class after a terrific day of pirating. So what can we learn from this? You see, when we're kids, we're usually impervious to exclusion. We're accommodating. We just want to have fun. The more people we involve in our games, the more fun it is. It's that simple. That's it. As children, we also learn to be inclusive. We hear the story of the ugly duckling. We listen to Barney's I Love You song and more. So why is it that, as we grow up, we become increasingly judgmental? Why is it that, as we grow up, the issue of inclusivity is exactly that, an issue? Why is it that, as we grow up, our inclusivity falls? We need to learn from kids again. We need to learn from their stories, and we need to learn about their seemingly silly pirate games. Actually, wait. Imagine this. You're no longer in the playground. You are a real pirate on a voyage across the seven oceans. You're the captain of the greatest pirate ship ever built. Your crewmates are world class, each having a purpose on board. Throughout your journey, you encounter a plethora of castaways. You see, pirates have a kind of code of honor. They don't just ditch new people they meet. They pick them up and make them part of their crew. They find a place for them aboard the ship. So, as your voyage progresses, you have more and more crewmates, and you become the greatest pirate captain in history. Are you making a link here? Your whole life is the voyage through the seven oceans. Your life is the pirate ship, and you are its captain. The people you know are your crewmates. The castaways you encounter are the, are the new people you meet in your life. As you meet more people, you make a place for them. You learn from their skills, their perspective, and their differences. Through all this inclusion, you become the greatest single person you could possibly be. You don't judge other people. You don't exclude them. You include them. So as kids, we are open to including others. Society needs to recognize that viewpoint and learn it again. On the flip side, inclusivity is not only dependent on those who surround you, but also yourself. Eugene? So my story begins when Holly first approached me and asked me to speak for this time. I wasn't sure what I'd talk about, and I was getting nervous thinking about coming up on stage and speaking in front of a crowd. But she told me to talk about a personal experience about inclusivity. The first thing that came to my mind was my first few weeks in school. I remember walking into school <coughs> with my older sister, and I was wearing a red hat trying to cover my face. I was extremely shy around new people, and in a few minutes, I was, about, I was going to walk into a classroom full of my new classmates. I walked in and I sat down in the corner. I didn't speak to anyone that was already there at the time. More people walked in eventually and they all sat next to their friends, talked about how great their summer had been, what they did, where they had been, and then there was me, <coughs> just sitting there. Looking back at it now, I find it quite funny, but I can tell you at the time I wasn't enjoying myself. So that's how I was for the first few weeks. I would barely speak to anyone, and if I did, it would be because I was in a group. I'll always remember <clears throat> during uh, a PE lesson, Mrs. Mack telling people to be more like me, to get to class on time. Little did she know it was because <laughs> I had nothing better to do um, other than get to class 10 minutes before I started. 
Uh, I remember spending my lunch time sitting at the library reading for the entirety of the duration. But lucky, luckily for me, that changed eventually. In one of the science lessons, we had an experiment to do, and we had to get in groups. You know how you have those friends that you don't even need to look in their direction, and you know that you're going to be partners with them? That definitely wasn't me. But just as I, was, as, as I was preparing to work alone, Riju came up to me and asked me if I'd like to work with him as a, and that's the story of how I made my first friend. Thinking about it now, I realize the reason it took me so long to make my first friend wasn't because no one wanted to include me in their group of friends, but rather because I closed myself off. Inclusivity isn't just about how other people <coughs> react to you, it's also about how you react to other people. As long as you yourself are open to being included by joining ECAs, participating in group activities, and have a positive approach to what you do, people will naturally be drawn towards you and want to include you. We're quite lucky in our school. We have lots of different people of different cultures, and people are generally very nice, but it can still be hard to feel included if you decide to close yourself off. Individuals need to recognize this. Your own viewpoint has just as much weighting as society's. So as you can see, inclusivity embodies two different viewpoints. One of being open to include others, and another of being open to be included. 